307. Who is the Lord? Calcedon Report No. 156, August 1978. The July 1978 edition of Yankee magazine carries a very interesting article about one of the last Connecticut small farmers, John Ludorf. The author, Georgia Sharon, a neighbour, describes Ludorf at work as he cuts timber for firewood. The final log, weighing 150 pounds, resists splitting completely and he lifts it up in one swift, clean swing to lay atop the waiting pile. John Ludorf is 81 years old today. Ludorf has a problem. His family cannot afford to inherit his farm. I never made more than $3,800 a year in my life from my farm, but by my dying on it, the government gets to make $70,000. The inheritance tax will wipe out the family farm. If this sounds familiar, it is, first, because it is happening to 75% of all farms, businesses and properties in the United States. The inheritance tax wipes out the family. Scripture repeatedly speaks of the treatment of widows and orphans as revelatory of a people's righteousness. Today, virtually all nations are found wanting in its respect. Widows lose their homes, and young men find they are working for a new owner of a family business. Second, there is a clear echo here of the Naboth story. Ahab, however, was crude. The modern state confiscates by means of taxation and disinherits widows and children. Such a condition is a product of our contempt for God's law. Men refuse to believe that God's righteousness or law is an unchanging one, like the Lord, the same in every age. They turn away from God's righteousness for a self-generated holiness, which is no holiness at all. In the Christian school trials, the church trials, we see these self-holy men turned savagely against persecuted pastors, schoolmen and parents because the stand of these men against humanistic statism troubles their conscience. These compromisers seem to feel that holiness comes not by faith with works, but by faith with criticism, and they thereby manifest their faithfulness to Phariseeism. On almost any given day, Monday through Friday, somewhere in the United States, Christians are in court for their faith. Our Lord makes it clear that He is there also. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Matthew chapter 25 verse 40 What is our Lord's word to you? Where the freedom of the faith to be under Christ's lordship alone is gone, then the basic theft has taken place. Then, too, our inheritance in faith, land and goods is also gone. Either Jesus Christ is Lord, or the state is. The question of our time is this. Who is your Lord? Christ or Caesar? Will you say with the false priests of old, We have no king but Caesar. John chapter 19 verse 15. 